Hey everybody and welcome to July's edition of Board Game Buys. So this is where I talk about all of the board games that I've added to my collection over the last 30 days or so, whether I've played them or not. Now I don't have too many games here because I'm still dealing with the huge intake of games that we added during the UK Games Expo, but there's still some notable ones here to talk about. But before we get started on the video, I want to give a shout out to the show sponsor, Kienda. .co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer, and if you use the link in my show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. But let's start the video with the biggest edition, at least um, physically, this is the Lagrania Deluxe Master Set. So just been fulfilled on Kickstarter, probably one of the last Kickstarter games that I backed on Kickstarter, so um, I think I may have got them all now. But this is uh, a critical darling when it comes to the Euro um, board game space. It's one that I don't think did terribly amazingly commercially, but it definitely did have its, you know, it had its plaudits and people who liked it. And I never got to play the original version of the game. And when I saw that Board and Dice were um, launching this new shiny version with, with a bunch of new modules um, from a bunch of guest designers, such as Stefan Feld and some other notable names, I jumped up the opportunity to um, to get this one. Now I have already played this one and I have recorded a review. That review may have already been uploaded by the time this video um, is uploaded. So um, have a look at my videos for that one. So, um, you know, I'm not scared to say this game was very good. I enjoyed it tremendously. It has some great card play as you can use these cards for multiple different uses, such as giving you ongoing powers, um, new contracts, increasing your farm space to produce resources, or even making you better at doing things and giving you more income. Pretty much ticks every box that I want from a Euro game, um, and it was a lot more very enjoyable, and I have so much more to explore with all these additional modules. So that is Lagrania, the Deluxe Master Set, a very nice production uh, to boot. So let's move on to something much older now. So this is Ave Caesar. So this is a game that goes back to the 1980s, I believe. And it is a chariot racing game where you are managing this hand of cards. And the hand of cards you have is identical to everybody else, but you do have a limited option of what you have in your hand. And you are basically playing them to race around this modular track um, using, basically trying to use these choke points to your advantage, trying to squeeze into the inside lanes to make sure you are moving fewer spaces to finish first and not to waste uh, any movement. Now, I'm not sure if I'll do a full review of this one. Um, you know, I've been curious to play this one over, over the years because it has still got people who speak highly of it in the racing game genre. I personally think that it feels like a game from its time. This is from the 1980s. It feels like a 1980s game. And um, there are other games that are pretty similar that, you know, do a much better job. Now, I don't normally do reviews in these videos, but I think if you are interested in this one, maybe check out something like Flam Rouge or Heat Pedal to the Metal because it has some foundations of those games, but those games really did bring it up to the modern era. So that is Ave Caesar. Very simple, very accessible. And I love the theme, especially with the chariots, because you know I love I love chariot racing, I love the Roman theme. But um yeah, it definitely is um dated to say the least. Um, one that I don't really know much about now, this is um, Miasma Chronicles. Now, apparently this is based on a video game. I had this sent to me by the publisher. Um, I don't know anything about the video game. I don't know anything about this game at all, um, but they sent it to me anyway. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I know. I'm a bit concerned that the box says it takes 90 minutes. I um, want to play a game. It looks abstract by the grid nature of this. Um, I know nothing about the theme at all, so I'm not going to be invested in that in that respect. So um who knows? It could be good. I doubt it very much, but, you know, we shall see. That is Miasma Chronicles, uh, the board game. Now, moving on to uh, Chin. So this is a game that, again, you guys probably already know that I like because it did feature at number one on my most recent ranking video. Um, it's an abstract style game, a tile placement game, as you are trying to shed all these pagodas as quickly as you can by matching these different terrain types, basically. And you can encroach on other people, steal their stuff, as in kick their people off the um, off their spaces and take it for yourself. Um, you can try and add to these cities to get some more coverage and shed your pagodas quicker. Um, it's so simplistic, it's very pure, just draw a tile, add it to your hand and then, you know, place a tile. Or I think you draw it at the end of your turn, but you get the gist. 
Um, I'm in love with this one. It is absolutely fantastic. A very different game depending on the player count. Um, you could argue that there is some luck with the draw of the tiles, which is the case. You know, if you get these double tiles, you, they are probably stronger than the two half tiles. But the game is so quick and so punchy that that doesn't bother me one bit. It's a joy to play and, um, you know, definitely stay, stands on its own in regard to the uh, abstract genre of games, which I generally am not a big fan of. That may be changing. And you know, I have noticed that over the last maybe six months or so, my enjoyment of abstract games has definitely increased. Maybe I wasn't playing the good ones. And Chin is certainly not only a good one, but it is a great one. Now, another game, I may cover it on its own in a review because it's not going to take me very long. It's pretty simple. Um, but I also may cover it in a, you know, in a compilation review with some other stuff. But that is Chin. Um, also picked up a copy of Lak Shadweep. Now, this is a two-player only tile placement game where you are building a communal map with these double-sided um, tiles. Now, it is only two players, and the twist in this game is that if um, a certain kind of um, aspect of scoring is your opponent's colour on one side, you flip it over and it'll be your colour on the other one. But, of course, some other aspects will change to their colour. And it's all about trying to place these optimally. There's all these different symbols and things scored in different ways. And reading the rule book, it sounds really smart. So I'm actually quite chapped to get the bit to play this one. Um, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. It looks like it's pretty quick. I think it only takes you know, 30 minutes according to the box. Um, nothing terribly new, but doesn't really matter. If it's a good game, it's a good game. And I'm actually really excited for this one. So that is Lack Shadow Weep. Another game I've not had a chance to play yet, which is only two players. This is War Chest with the uh, Nobility expansion. Now I say I haven't played it yet. I have played it, a kind of a practice game out of four players, two on two. I'm not gonna share anything more than that. It's a very popular game. Uh, the Nobility expansion just adds some more of these characters that you can use, as well as an extra special rule, which I th actually think the game will benefit massively from. But basically this is a kind of a chess variant as you are trying to change all these um, control markers on the board to your color by you know, exploiting the powers of your personal units. And there's no duplicate units on the board at all. So if I've got the knight, then my opponent will not have the knight. They might have the crossbowman or the pikeman or something like that. So um, very abstract. You know, I just mentioned about games, um, abstract games norm normally not being my jam, um, but will war chest be my jam? You shall wait and see. Um, hopefully I'm gonna play some more of this very soon. And the last bunch of games here, or something I've been sent by the um, the designer. Now, a couple of these are prototypes, and these are from a um, a Dutch publishing company called Ra Games. Now, one of these is, I think, a finished product that is going to be mini containers. We also have a pure prototype here called Small Store Survival. Um, the, the box is pretty light there. You might not be able to see the artwork and stuff. Um, and we also have, um, I think this is the... Uh, this is the foreign language version of this game. So this is a uh, theme park tempo. Now this is the prototype. This is what the game will look like in in final, but it's not in English yet. I think it's coming out in English soon. So I haven't read the rules for any of these yet. The designer reached out to me because he knows the kind of games that I cover and like on the channel. And, um, you know, I love a clever small card game. So hopefully these are going to be right up my alley. And I'm going to be a bit of a little hidden gem that I'm going to um, enjoy. So really excited to see what these games have to offer from a new fresh designer. So that is um, a bunch of games here by Ra Games. And that's it really. That's all the games I've added. Let me know which games you are most excited to see me cover. And whether it's going to be one of these bigger ones, one of these smaller ones, um, etc. So again, I think the Lagrania review will probably already be uploaded by the time this video does. So um, go check that one out. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content too. And for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.